Hello wonderful person, this is Anton, and today we're going to be discussing some of the new observations and new research in regards to the object you see right here. The object known as 3C297, a quasar relatively far away from us, several billion light years away from us, that's actually quite well known and was studied previously, but turned out to be even more surprising than the scientists thought. Because it turns out that this unusual object is a very unusual lonely quasar. As in, it's a lonely galaxy that doesn't seem to have any partners because the quasar seems to have eaten them. Or essentially absorbed them through multiple collisions which eventually led to the formation of a much larger object. Which makes this peculiar object particularly intriguing because this is not what was expected at all. And by the way, if you're wondering what you're actually looking at, here's roughly what all of this is. So we have the supermassive black hole in the middle, we have the jet pointed almost directly toward us, we have the jet going the other way, and various emissions created by the hot gas. And that's because fundamentally all quasars have a very similar mechanism producing all of these effects. It's all mostly generated by a very powerful black hole in the middle, but a black hole that seems to contain a relatively large amount of gas orbiting around it, creating an enormous accretion disk that's then responsible for producing these jets, which travel for hundreds and even thousands of light years, interacting with the gas nearby, and also producing extremely bright emissions in various frequencies, visible from pretty much the edge of the universe. Except for blazers, these are some of the brightest objects out there visible to us. And as I've previously mentioned in videos that you can find in the description, because of their brightness and because of their relative stability, on top of the fact that they're really far away from us, today the position of quasars in the night skies is used for pretty much all of the most precise navigation on the planet. We no longer use stars, we only use quasars. And so even things like GPS and a lot of other navigation systems usually rely on the data coming from various observatories responsible for producing these extremely accurate quasar maps. But that's beside the point. The point is that these are still relatively mysterious objects and we still do not always understand how they were formed. And in terms of this particular quasar, things get even more mysterious. Here's actually what it kind of looks like in optical light. This is the image taken by the Hubble Space Telescope. And this galaxy is really far away. The light coming from this galaxy took approximately 9.2 billion years to reach us. But it produces a lot of other frequencies as well. It produces radio frequencies and it also produces a lot of X-rays. And so it's the X-ray emissions that were recently captured by the Chandra telescope that started to reveal something unusual. And the data coming from this telescope revealed that the jets seem to be traveling through the intergalactic medium. Something that we usually expect from a typical galactic cluster. Or a typical galactic group like the one you see right here. This is known as the Roberts Quartet. Four relatively massive galaxies that at some point are going to collide that are gravitationally connected to one another. Although the James Webb Space Telescope was able to produce a much more famous example. The image of the Seven Squinted. The image showing us one type of the galactic groups. These are usually referred to as compact groups. Where the galaxies are relatively close together. There's another type of galactic groups known as the protogroups, where the galaxies are still coming together. To some extent this is actually the Milky Way and the Andromeda. But the much more interesting example of galactic groups is known as the fossil group. Here is the closest known example. NGC 6482. And this is essentially the end result of a typical galactic group. Or following a typical galactic collision, we kind of expect them to turn into some kind of an elliptical galaxy, very often possessing a lot of mass in the center, with most of the stars and most of the mass concentrated in a single object, with only some objects, some smaller galaxies, orbiting nearby. And when it comes to the so-called fossil groups, quite a lot of them have been discovered around us, because this is something we expect a lot of larger galaxies to end up as after billions of years of interaction. And most of them do end up as elliptical galaxies, which then also often exhibit quite a lot of other effects. Many of them turn into radio galaxies and start producing these very large jets, only visible with radio frequencies. But so far none of them have been actually known to possess a lot of features similar to a typical quasar. And the reason I wanted to discuss the fossil group is for one simple reason. It looks like this unusual quasar that NASA has recently investigated seems to possess all of the features indicating that this is also a fossil group. Or basically this is the end result of a massive collision between several different galaxies. Even though nobody expected it to be one. As a matter of fact, here the scientists did expect to find at least 10 different galaxies. Something that often is seen around various quasars. Although I guess the question is why? 
Why did the scientists actually expect to see galaxies? Well, here all of this was based on X-ray observations from the Chandra telescope. And specifically, because of the interaction of the jets with all of the stuff nearby. And here, as the jet traveled away from the galaxy, it started to interact with what seemed to be intergalactic medium, gas between galaxies. Something that does not exist around fossil galaxies or fossil groups, such as NGC 6482. Yet the jets were still interacting with something. And so the scientists realized maybe there were some galaxies hiding nearby. And more intriguingly, that hotspot you see right there, approximately 150,000 light years away from the center, was a direct indication that there was a huge gas cloud that suddenly created a lot of emissions visible in the X-rays. All of this suggested there was a lot of hot intergalactic gas surrounding this unusual galaxy. And so by looking around in other frequencies, they did discover 19 different galaxies that seem to be in the same location on the picture. But further investigations determined that they were much, much farther away and actually much, much closer to us to be in any way connected to this unusual quasar. In other words, these were galaxies in the same two-dimensional plane, but they were nowhere nearby 3C297 quasar, which implied that this was a lonely galaxy, a quasar surrounded by what seemed to be intergalactic dust, with the only possible explanation being a major consumption of other galaxies that used to exist here and have now been completely absorbed into one single object with all of the gas remaining around the galaxy and producing these unusual effects. But because the gas was still visible and because it was producing these effects, it suggested that all of this might have happened not so long ago. Which does make sense. Once again, this is approximately 9.2 billion years old. Or essentially when the universe was only 4.5 billion years old, implying that all of this must have happened really quickly and implying that these massive galaxies were able to develop and then combine into one massive object, producing all of these emissions, leaving nothing but gas behind. Which does imply that all of this can happen pretty quickly, much quicker than anyone ever believed. And because all of these other galactic fossils have only been really seen in the local universe or the universe that's at least 10 billion years old, discovering an object so far away when the universe was much younger once again highlights that there is something we don't understand about galactic evolution and the evolution of various galactic clusters. Although in this case, it does not break any theories. Everything here still kind of makes sense. The only thing that is unusual is the fact that this is a lonely galaxy. And the only reason this even became a quasar is because the galaxy ended up consuming all of its neighbors. But you can learn more in the paper in the description below. So a pretty intriguing and a pretty unusual quasar and the most distant fossil group ever seen. But if you'd like to learn more about unusual quasars, check out some of the other videos in the description below. Thank you for watching, subscribe, share this with someone who has learned about space and sciences, come back tomorrow to learn something else, and maybe support this channel on Patreon by joining channel membership or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye-bye.